Hi, everyone. It's, it's great being here. Um, before uh, I'll jump into the conversation, um, a few things. Uh, as I said, my name is Zach Weisfeld. I run Microsoft Ventures for Europe. I was co-founder with Rahul Sood. Some of you may know him for Microsoft Ventures uh, a couple years ago. Um, and uh, I also run our accelerators globally. We have uh, seven of those, as I mentioned. We actually started the first one in Tel Aviv in April 2012 and immediately after opened Bangalore and Beijing, which is interesting. I think it's one of the first things that Microsoft did first outside and then in Redmond. And I think we, we can talk a little bit about maybe about why that happened. And I think we have some, some commonalities here and in Israel that was harder to start with something like this in, in Redmond. Um, before I'll jump into it, it's an, I have an interesting observation regarding um, uh, Indians and Israelis. Uh, we're, much closer than, than I actually thought in, in many aspects. One of the things I've learned yesterday is, is uh, something about time. And um, I was not sure if I was late to my session yesterday, didn't start it yet. And then one of the people came to me and said, Are you, have you put your watch on um, IST, which is Indian stretchable time, I understand. So uh, Israel is also an IST on Israel's stretchable time, so we'll definitely have that, uh, that commonality. The other thing is I'm taking from the presentation earlier from uh, Anupam from, from PayPal. You know, he talked about nothing is impossible, take risks and get shit done. So definitely these are things that, that uh, we practice, we practice every day. Uh, we have, for, fortunately, unfortunately, we don't have any other uh, option other than take these things very seriously. I want to start with a short video um, that uh, tries to show some of the things that came out of the Israel industry for the last few years, and then, and then I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that. So please, if you can run the video. You find seeds that can be programmed to become whatever you wish. You engineer them to have limitless creativity. You plant them in soil designed to nourish them. They yield fruits of endless new inventions. So I think what, 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 uh, what you've seen is a lot of things that have been developed in Israel. Um, there are a lot of breakthrough technologies, a lot of the things that all of us are using every day that have started in Israel. And it's part of the reason for um, so many multinationals being in Israel. We have 200, um, about 290 multinational R&D centers that have opened a shop in Israel. Some of them, for the first time ever outside of the U.S., for example, their first R&D center outside of the U.S. will be in, in, in Israel. And we'll talk about that. So, um, it's a shot of Tel Aviv. Um, so, first of all, a bit of, of statistics so, so you know. Uh, so, we don't have a billion people in Israel. I don't know if it's a surprise or a shock to anyone. We have only about 8 million people in, um, in Israel. Uh, our GDP per capita is getting closer to European levels, so about $30,000, $35,000, $40,000 uh, per capita. 
Uh, our inflation rate is very low. Well, today in this world, it's, it's not a, a, such a big deal anymore, but it's, it's uh, pretty low. Uh, very low unemployment rates, especially where uh, the developed world has been going through some challenges in the last few years. Israel is doing pretty well, about 6% inflation rates. Um, uh, the largest cities, like here in India, are about 400,000 people or 800,000 people. These are our largest cities, right, in, in Israel. We have about only about 300,000 people in the tech industry, so it's not a huge industry, and about 4,800 startups. So you've mentioned earlier that the numbers here are, are starting to look like you know, 2,000, 3,000 uh, startups. We have 4,800 startups uh, in Israel, and the good thing, we have a lot of data. So talking about data, we have a lot of data, so we are named, so all of these startups, we know actually uh, about their, their existence, or most of them. And as I said, about 290 global R&D centers. So um, IBM opened their first R&D center outside of the US back in the 70s in Israel. Uh, Intel opened their first R&D center outside of the US in Israel. Microsoft, back in 91, opened the, its first uh, uh, R&D center outside of Redmond in, in Tel Aviv. And Apple, in 2011, based on an acquisition they did in Israel, opened their first R&D center outside of Cupertino. So uh, still a trend that's going on. People go to Israel, again, they don't go because of the next billion people that they go here or China, they go because some of the innovation and um, the breakthrough technologies that are uh, coming out of, of uh, Israel. So, parking Israel for a second, I was asked to, to talk about what would it take to make Bangalore, to make uh, uh, cities in India healthy, startup ecosystems. How can we make more cities that would look like Tel Aviv, would look like what, what's happening there? And if you look at, at, at what makes um, a healthy startup ecosystem, there are a few things. First of all, you have to have the feeders. So you have to have strong universities. So we had a great presentation earlier um, here about academics and how, how the university is bringing a lot of interesting knowledge and new ideas uh, to bear. So important to have uh, uh, strong universities. Multinational companies, very important to have these because, again, they usually spend more money on R&D and let some of the people innovate. Um, successful startups, super critical. It's not easy. Um, usually when you get someone to be successful with a startup, they move to New York, they move to the Silicon Valley, and they tend to stay there. I think a big challenge would be here, as we've we were challenged in Israel, but we were succeeded in that, is get the people back. So they will come back to their cities and start evolving their local ecosystem. Super critical. And then people that have worked with these for these successful startups then start new things. Um, failed startups, again, people that have been a failed startup, we usually call it uh, uh, failing in Israel, we call experience. And it's a super, super critical cultural thing. Uh, when you're in, in Germany, for example, you're, you're, um, uh, and you fail with your startup, not only that you're not going to get funded again with your next startup, even if you're a great PhD and your father worked forever at Siemens and you could have worked at Siemens but you decided to do a startup, they're not going to get you back. You're not going to be able to go back to Siemens because you're a failure. You, you, you've just shown that you're not successful. So I'm not sure how the culture is here regarding failure, but failure is good. It's experience. It's something you should learn from. Um, then company builders, this is something very uh, unique again in Germany, they have these company builders with creating startups. And the specific Israel example is the army. Um, and uh, there are a lot of talks about you know, the Israeli army and its role in creating an ecosystem. It's a very, very important role there because you have people that have been working in technology for uh, 5, 10, 15 years in army settings where money is not an issue, uh, and taking technology to, to really to the, the next level. And then they graduate. They graduate as teams, and they start a startup, and they commercialize a military technology. Usually, the Israeli government and army do not show prior art for the kind of things that these guys are developing. So there's no, not much of an IP issue there. Uh, and then you have the, uh, I'll actually run for the, the um, last part. The last part is you need to have also exit routes. Uh, so global tech companies that are looking for acquisitions and then public markets. So a way to go public with your company and your idea. Now, the piece in the middle is the most important piece to, to, to have a thriving ecosystem. You have to have mentors. Mentors are successful entrepreneurs that have been at it and, and uh, know how to do it. Um, you need to have the right investors. 
And right investors means people that understand what it takes to be an entrepreneur. They don't take 55% equity when they invest in a startup because at that minute, it's no longer the startup of the entrepreneur. And again, there are a lot of people, a lot of money around the world. People that understand how to invest in technology is not something uh, uh, easy, especially not in the early uh, uh, stages. Uh, VCs with experience, services companies with experience of opening the right company, the right structure. Government role, super critical, especially in early stages. Uh, we still see issues with labor laws. We still see issues with, um, with taxation in many ecosystems around the world. So the government has a role of, of helping out these, these uh, startup ecosystems. The Israel government 30 years ago understood that they have to support a thriving ecosystem, and they started the VCs. The VCs in Israel have actually started by a government initiative to enable that. And it's a, it's a, it was a pretty interesting, far, you know, looking forward-looking uh, approach they took. Um, and probably the most important piece is culture. That's what glues all of this. A culture that lets people bring new ideas, let them fail, uh, um, uh, celebrate successes. Um, there, great. So, so, um, so I'll start. So I'll talk about academics and about the uh, universities. So, uh, these are stats about Israel. So, uh, first of all, according to the World Economic Forum, Israel is number one when it comes to quality of academic research for the last three years. So, again, great universities and and uh, great uh, researchers. If about 12% of the population has advanced degrees. Um, if you look at, at Shanghai University's uh, ranking they put out every year, out of the top 30 computer science schools in the world, um, you have, um, most of them are US based. You have uh, one Swiss, you have two from Hong Kong, you have one from the UK, and then four from Israel. And these are on the, the top computer science schools. Um, and you should definitely make sure you get some schools from here to be part of, this, uh, of, of uh, the, these top schools. Um, for the ones that know the Turing Award and the Godel Award, so these are the top, these are the Nobel Prizes for computer science, right? So, so uh, Israel is number three in the world with the number of Godel Awards, and number two, sorry, number two at Godel, and number three in Turing. And again, uh, the number one is US, then you have UK, then you have Israel. And, and this is total number, right? It's not per capita. Um, uh, which, which are super uh, critical, and then 46% of the population has a higher education. Um, I talked about the, the multinationals and the global R&D centers, so maybe the numbers are not big. If you look at the number of employees, you know, Microsoft has a little bit more than 600 R&D people in Israel. Uh, Google has about 400 employees. Apple has about 400. So the numbers are maybe not impressive, just as total number of people, especially as I'm talking here in India. But they all do some breakthrough technologies for these companies. Many cases, they're based on acquisitions that these companies have made uh, out of Israel. So um, uh, we've made eight acquisitions the last few years um, in Israel. Um, Apple have uh, based everything they do in Israel on a couple of acquisitions they did. They did an acquisition of a, a flash memory company called Anubit and another acquisition of a company called PrimeSense that does 3D cameras. Um, and Pretty strong work that these companies are doing, are doing there in Israel. A um, few stats on, on, uh, on how, how are we still doing. So we're still doing very well when it comes to, to uh, uh, funding of, uh, of new ideas. So this is uh, uh, the second quarter, 2014 is, is the last uh, column there. So about a billion dollar of uh, investments and about 175 deals. Um, so growing, still growing. Uh, Pretty nice numbers. Uh, it's uh, higher than, than uh, most of the European countries together. Um, of course, after the Silicon Valley is much higher than, than Tel Aviv. Um, if you look at uh, exits and IPO markets, again, going pretty strong. So this is for half year 2014, already at about, uh, uh, at about uh, 5 billion and 66 uh, uh, deals. So again, pretty, pretty strong uh, with, uh, with exits. These are a few of the top exits that happened in the market. So Waze is still the highest uh, um, ever that I think someone paid for, uh, um, for an app like this. So Google bought uh, Waze for a uh, for billion dollar. Um, Trustier was sold to IBM for about a billion dollar. So a few nice, nice uh, uh, exits in the market. And then 
uh, top IPOs, latest uh, IPOs. I won't get too much into that. The, the, so the one question is, what's special about Israel? What's so unique? So that's a book that if you want to read more about this, this unique culture and this unique place, I, I think you should read. It's called uh, a Startup Nation by Dan Senior and, and Saul Singer, two journalists um, uh, from, from New York. And um, they try to explain what's so unique. How, the, how come this tiny company, country with so many enemies and so many problems have developed such an industry and, and such a, a success story, an economic success story. And there are multiple things. So um, uh, first of all, Israelis, as some of you have already figured out, right, Rajneesh, for me, it, we're pretty direct. Uh, so we'll say what we think. We'll say it. We'll sometimes people think we're a little bit obnoxious, but we're, you know, we're just trying to, to move the needle fast. So Israelis are very direct. They usually don't beat about around the bush. They say it the way it is and try to move it forward, not because they're not nice people and not because they want to harm anyone, just because they, move, they want to move things faster. Uh, my first, uh, I, I spent about eight years in Silicon Valley, and my first, uh, uh, my first role, I uh, came into the office and I met with my boss, who was the CEO of the company, another Israeli. I went into his room and uh, I, after an hour, I went out, and one of the people working for me came to me and says, so it's not working for you, huh? And I said, what are you talking about? I said, you went into the room, and for an hour, you were shouting at each other. I said, we had an amazing conversation. We've achieved so much. So it's, it's, it is part of the culture. Uh, questioning authority. So you'll get a junior engineer, five level below the CEO, in an all-hands meeting, telling the CEO that he thinks that what we're doing is bullshit. And it's the wrong thing, the wrong direction, and this is why. One, two, three, four, five. Great. Questioning authority. If you see something wrong, you say it. And you're going to be awarded for it, not, not kicked for it. Um, the entrepreneurial spirit, spirit and tenacity. So every Jewish mother wants her son now to be an entrepreneur and to make a big exit. They used to want them to be lawyers and doctors, but, but it's part of the spirit. You start new things. You want to have a lot of entrepreneurs. You want to, uh, you want to be successful. Uh, I talked about the attitude about, uh, around uh, failure, uh, talent. I talked a little bit about the Army. Very, very critical, has helped a lot create these, these technology companies, especially the, the intelligence score. Again, if you look at some of the things that Israel has produced in the last few years, um, especially around machine learning and around machine vision, uh, these are all technologies that for years have been used um, in, in different uh, military settings. And now, finally, the world needs so much data um, uh, analysis and so much vision analysis that, that we can contribute, uh, and of course academic. Uh, teamwork and joint mission, every Israeli exits every time there's a big exit. We all feel proud that ICQ exited back in 2008, uh, in uh, uh, 98. The, the biggest thing that happened to all of us, we were all part of that exit. Uh, and the same with Waze, et cetera. So there's something about the commonality and, and working together in a joint mission. A dense network, every Israeli you'll meet knows another Israeli that you know, or there's at least one person between them. So the one degree of separation is very strong. You always know people from Israel. Almost every person here that talked to me is someone they know I know. So it's a uh, um, it's, it's pretty strong um, uh, ecosystem. Uh, Cross-disciplinary, so one of the things we're very strong at is uh, we're really good at you when you need to connect things, when they're not that siloed, when you need to bring system capabilities, so hardware, software, um, bringing things together. Um, and maybe the last thing I'll, I'll mention here is, uh, well, the can-do spirit. You know, there's nothing we can't do. We can do everything. Sometimes it's a challenge. And, and you know, our, so the people in Redmond actually sometimes find it hard that the team in Israel don't really want to do what they're asked to do, but they actually have a better idea of what we should do. Uh, so sometimes it's a challenge, but, but I think if you manage it properly, you get a lot of great stuff. And, and something that works well, and I think is, is, is getting uh, more and more happening here, is, is mature management talent. So people that have been working for, for technology companies for years, have managed in technology companies for years, and then coming back to the industry, starting companies. So that's definitely, um, definitely very helpful. So um, just uh, leave you with one, one image on, on uh, um, just one image of, of the way that the startup industry in Israel looks like. So this is, uh, it's a, as I said, a very active 
um, startup community. So you have lots of VCs. We have pretty large local VCs. So Pitango is a $1.5 billion local VC. You have Sequoia very active, like they're here, a very active Sequoia uh, in Israel. But a, lot of, a lot of VCs, a lot of early stage and micro funds, um, accelerators, incubators, and hubs. Um, Microsoft Ventures came into a very busy market, but still became the number one accelerator in the market, which is, again, not being easy. I think we're doing some similar work here. Um, active M&A by the large corporations, and a lot of companies in different sectors that are really leading their field. So uh, the numbers that you don't see here is, is Tel Aviv is about 4,800 um, startups. Uh, you'll see it London here with about 3,000, Berlin and, and Paris with about 2,500. So um, when I finish with that, thank you very much for inviting me here. So, Zach, a, a couple of things. One, uh, we're great, you know, India and Israel have been great friends. We had Orna Berry here last year. I think the, the slide you showed us on the ecosystem is very similar to India. A lot of the companies you showed in your video also do business here. So a lo lot of things. So what is one difference, big difference, between a founder in Israel and the founder or entrepreneur you see in India? Yeah, so, so there's, there's one saying, it actually comes from Yiddish, I don't know how many of you, it's a pretty old language, it's called chutzpah. And chutzpah is, it's, it's hard to, to, to translate chutzpah, it's something about uh, being bold, uh, being out there, not afraid to, to say what you think, not afraid to shoot for the stars, so chutzpah is this, this same thing that lets a junior engineer go to the CEO and say, I think we're doing the wrong thing, or, or an entrepreneur that will, will come to Ravi that runs the accelerator and say, this is what I need. So we see it very often in Tel Aviv. I think here it's much less, you know, you see people asking much more quietly, and they think that maybe we should do something. The chutzpah thing helps a lot, and it's, it's, it's a cultural aspect. Great. Thank you, Zach. Here's a token of our appreciation. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you very much.